how important is it for someone in your position of power to always tell the truth? I think it's, I think it's absolutely vital. And How important is it for someone in your position of power to always tell the truth? I think it's absolutely vital. Watch that clip. I wonder if you've ever asked yourself whether a journalist, an establishment, truly possesses the will, or I would say the ethos of being objective. If you are a reporter, are you truly objective? Or have you ever noticed any news establishment that has really um, practiced true objectivity in the context of what the society for professional journalists holds as sacred in terms of telling the truth at all times and verifying? Now that clip with the former Prime Minister of, of Britain, um, Boris Johnson, really revealed the proclivity of, of the BBC, which is supposed to be replicated as being the most objective among those global media establishments. They have removed or they would have shortened the laughter. As a result, maybe in the minds of those who are viewing the cutting of that particular segment, uh, the, the need to protect um, the perceptions out there about, you know, Prime Minister Johnson being heckled. But for whatever reason, the tweets that went out really spoke to the ability of the BBC to be perceived or seen as wholly objective, meaning that carry the, the, the question that was posed by the journalists as well as the response that came from the audience. And so question, questions or issues pertaining to objectivity play pretty much into what we will be discussing today in the context of objectivity. At issue here is the fact versus truth. Question is, are reporters obligated to research the veracity of statements sources make before those statements are published or broadcast in the news? The answer is absolutely. It is the reporter's obligation to make sure that the depth and the breadth of the story is covered in such a way that the public is told, the public, you know, whoever the audience members are, they are very aware of all sides of the story from the plaintiff to the defendant, to the eyewitnesses, everyone who's involved in that particular story, they've got to be covered in a way that speaks to the whole notion of an objective nature of reporting. The facts of the story have got to be told as well as the truth. Now, the example that I like to give about fact versus truth, you can have a fact being told in the sense that you've seen the person coming out of the building, but the truth may be that they did not steal the item based on how the story is actually told. You can have two persons involved in, in different meetings in the, same, in the same building. They're coming out, the fact is you saw them come out of the building, but the truth is they were not in the same room. It is the, 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 the onus is on the reporter actually to say to the public, these are the facts of the case, but this is the truth based on how people have narrated what they have seen inside of the building. And this is where the truth now is established in that story. Now, if you've read the case study for today, the hypothetical scenario that was presented, it doesn't involve a real reporter at a real newspaper in a real city. It's made up just for us to actually understand how reporters should go about creating news stories that are accurate, fair, and comprehensive. So it is based you know, on, on actual events that happen to real media professionals, and of course, the way in which they present real consequences to ethically questionable actions Emerge in the case study. Now, again, some key emerging questions as you consider, you know, this whole notion of objectivity, and we'll progress into the ethics of reporting. The question is: Is it ethically acceptable to accurately report allegations without first determining whether they are truthful? All right, an allegation is an allegation until it is established as truthful. You can hear that someone is a person of interest. It is alleged that they did something, 
But unless you have actually spoken with that person, eyewitnesses, investigators, unless you have actually dug up all of the background for that story, then it's ethically unacceptable to actually report whatever you have discovered on the surface as factual. And so this is a key question that should be considered in determining whether you're going forward with that story as being truthful or whether you have to go back to the drawing board to determine the truth behind the story. Another question that emerges here in today's case study is, should journalists report allegations when there is no clear way to determine the actual truth? If you have no access to those sources, if you were not there on the scene, if you have access um, to the case files in a very limited way, then, you know, um, are you still reporting the issue as an allegation? All right, so these are questions that journalists have to be asking themselves every single day when it comes to objective reporting. Now, reporters should bracket, and this really means that they need to put aside their own biases and their personal views when it comes to covering a story. And you will hear from me later on when it comes to loyalty and conflict of interest, issues around bracketing will come into play. Uh, do I have the ability to actually pull myself out of that story if I know that I'm unable to divorce myself from my personal relationships with those who I'm actually covering? Um, do I feel a certain way about a particular community? Am I able to bracket and fully effectively cover that community? If you're not able to bracket, if that reporter is not able to bracket and leave their personal views or experiences out, then they should not really be covering the story because it affects their objectivity or their ability to carry the story in a way that is dispassionate or balanced. So those are very, very pertinent questions that a reporter should ask when it comes to being assigned to cover a particular issue on the whole notion of the ability to be as objective as possible. Now, what the reporters should be doing is gathering facts about an issue or event and, of course, taking care to address all points of view in that particular story. This means that the victim, the perpetrator, the eyewitnesses, all the multiple viewpoints should be included, including the police account as well, in terms of what has happened. If it's an issue that has occurred where, um, you know, police excesses were in, in, involved in it, you've got to carry the side of those who were involved in terms of officers, law enforcement, got to carry the side of the eyewitness, got to carry the side of the relatives, as well as the person against whom a particular act was committed. So all of those sides involved in that story, for the public to come up with their own conclusions, they've all got to be carried in terms of the facts of that event. All right. So the reporter who is objective will not just carry the victim side, they will carry the side of the person who's alleged to have committed that particular crime or act against an individual in society. Now, the argument that you may hear is that bracketing is not possible. We're living in a world where everybody knows everybody or everybody may have their own perspective, including the reporter. So how am I going to bracket? Now, this is where sufficiency comes into question. Now, there are a couple of ethical needs values in your textbook, if you go to pages 35 to 36. Sufficiency in that particular reading is defined as allocating adequate resources to important issues. This basically means that reporters should be thorough in their reporting, covering every single aspect of that story, making sure that you cover your grounds and you stop any particular blockage so that there is no discrepancy in the way in which your story is actually framed. We know that the news representation will be framed one way or another. And so they've got to decide whether they have sufficiently dedicated resources and time to actually cover that particular story. If they're constructing social reality, it must not be obscured in such a way that there is confusion in the minds of those persons who are actually part of the audience where that particular story is actually concerned. So here's some impl implications for Lawrence in the particular case that we looked at. The mayor alleged that the council member was a paid liar for the pesticide industry, all right? And of course, the council member said the allegations were unfounded, and he was outraged that the reporter wrote about the allegations without first confirming that they were true. So this is a conflict that you will see emerging here in the terms of this whole notion of this is an allegation, this is someone who's a council member. I want to run with the story, but I have not necessarily spoken with the person against whom the allegation is being made. All right? Serious allegation. You're looking at here defamation suit 
lawsuit, but then the, the reporter is saying, well, I've got to run with the story. So it's a situation where we've got to check to see exactly what is being carried on a daily basis and to what extent it can stand up to scrutiny in the context of being very objective reporting in journalism practice.